participate. Um, this is the Tech Interactive. Um, my name is Amy Bucher. I'm a professional development specialist with Bowers Institute, which is a part of the Tech Interactive. Um, and the Tech Interactive is in downtown San Jose. Our lovely building is closed at the moment, but we are doing a lot to help prepare educators and students for this new virtual um, environment. And we'll be sharing a number of resources for you on how to do that. And a little bit about myself. Um, I have worked with students um, at all ages from teaching kindergarten to um, college level, and I'm excited to talk with you today. Oh, Allison, you're muted again. <laughs> So sorry. Uh, I am Allison Ball, and I am the uh, manager of the Bowers Institute, which encompasses most of the uh, edu educational programs that we do that are uh, teacher facing. Uh, and so uh, I've been with the tech for six years, uh, ever since we started like really creating a lot of the great new content that a bunch of other people that are way more smarter than me are turning out. So uh, that's me. And we are recording this session so we can share it with others later. So just a heads up, um, this will be recorded and shared online so you can access the slides and the recording at a later date if you would like. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do today is go over what design challenge learning is and what that really means to the tech in our pedagogy. Uh, actually do a design challenge, get hands on. Uh, talk about how it is that you can adjust design challenges uh, in the specific one that we're going to do for K through eighth grade. Uh, and then also talk about hands-on learning and what that looks in a virtual setting, what we've uh, experienced and the best strategies that we've found. And then also to hear from you guys about what it is that you've learned as the best strategies. And then uh, we'll take some questions. And we really encourage you to ask questions throughout as they come up as well. So please feel free to put stuff in the chat. We've already asked people to share you know, their background and what ages they're um, interested in learning about and adapting for, but um, please put questions in the chat. There's also a Q&A um, thing that you'll see at the top of the screen that you can also put questions in as well. So what are design challenges? Uh, Design challenges ask learners to consider a real-world problem and create a solution through that, uh, through an iterative design process that we call the innovation design process. So uh, this asks learners to think about what the problem is that they're solving for, who it is that they're solving for, imagine what that solution might be, and then create something, whether that be a physical design or just a conceptual design, uh, test it physically or with another group of people, uh, like a, a panel, uh, and then reflect on that and figure out how it is that they can improve something that maybe didn't work correctly the first time or just improve it to make it a better product for the end user that they are, uh, that they are designing for. Uh, here at the Tech, we think about design challenges as having four key features. Uh, the first and foremost being that it is solvable by multiple solutions. So having a design challenge that is solvable by multiple solutions really creates a lot of creative confidence in your students. And it shows them that like, just because your solution doesn't look like another's doesn't mean that it can't solve a problem as well. Um, it also should provide for opportunities for iteration. You know, like I said, like we said before, uh, like if this didn't work the first time, how can you improve on that in order to make this work better the next time? Or if your design has been successful, how can you make it better to, to make it like more efficient? Um, <clears throat> design challenges also connect with participant interest. So uh, that's something that we'll go over a little bit more later on as far as how you can adapt a, a, a design challenge for a wide variety of students. And then we also like that uh, design challenges make an explicit connection uh, to real problems, I was, as we mentioned before, but also careers, building that STEM identity in students where they're like, oh yeah, I can do that. Um, <clears throat> So we're going to go over grade level adaptations a little bit later, but we also wanted to acknowledge that um, design challenges are interdisciplinary. So there's lot, multiple content connections that you can make throughout the process. Um, 
Science is at its core a part of the entire innovation design process. So you will be using and practicing and applying science concepts throughout, but we've called attention here to a couple different places and ways that you, that might happen. So in the defining the problem at the beginning when you're figuring out what your criteria and constraints are and what your real problem is, students might be looking really closely at those real world scenarios and using guiding questions that come from science or social studies. When they're looking at the imagine and create uh, portion of it and really getting hands on into prototyping, um, students will be relying on practicing creativity and collaboration and other so social emotional learning skills and they'll also be using the vocabulary and applying those science concepts. And then when you um, enter the sort of testing and reflecting portion and you're sharing your solutions with others and getting feedback, um, students will not only be using the vocabulary and science concepts, but they also have an opportunity to really use ELA and persuasive and argumentative writing and organizing and, and keeping track of data with math. And that varies depending, of course, upon grade level. But those are some different examples of how content connections can get interwoven into this process as well. So now we're going to have a chance to do a design challenge, the best part. <laughs> yeah, so now that we uh, understand all that framing, so our design challenge today is uh, face masks for friends. And uh, this project is in, uh, in a correlation and uh, <clears throat> in partnership with uh, Stanford Children's Health. And this is a great video that our, uh, our design team has used to, uh, to introduce us. Yeah, so I'm going to play this for you. Wow, that's a cool mouth accessory. Uh, can I have one? Uh, it's the Tech Interactive at Home. Sponsored by Sam for Children's Health. Hey Lauren, so my seal needs a mask. How do I even do this? Yeah, Hobbs has been begging me for one for weeks. That's me. Looks like it's time to hit the drawing board. To get started, grab some paper, something to draw with, and someone to design for. Make a note of any accessories or features you might have to design around. So Hobbs, what do you look for in personal protective equipment? I need something sturdy that my fangs can't poke a hole through. How about you, Miss Fishbrook? Make me something cute and waterproof. Now it's time to create your design concept. Miss Fishbrook has whiskers and no ears, so I have to make sure my mask cures some other way. Make sure to get our feedback throughout the design process. Um really was concerned about his fangs and making sure he didn't poke through. So I used the folding cloth technique so that you would have a lot of coverage to cover his large mouth. Miss Fishbreath has a little bit of structural pieces down here so it holds its shape and doesn't like crush her nose when she comes up and obviously it's made of waterproof material. That looks like a good fit but will it pull on my ears? I can't give my seal of approval until you can ensure the mask will stay on when I swim. I'm going to add strings to the ends of my mask so it ties them back. And we'll look at putting some strap buckles on the back so you can tighten it. Way to iterate, designers! Those look great! Okay. Alright, so... Now we are going to actually design some face masks. Um, you only need a few materials, uh, some paper, uh, a writing utensil, and a user. And your design problem is to protect the user by designing a mask that fits their unique needs. So to give you some variation by grade level, um, you could adapt this challenge. This is an example of how you could adjust this. Um, activity by grade level and adjust the user as well as the criteria and constraints. So for K through second grade, you may have students design for a stuffed animal or toy. Um, but for third through fifth and sixth through eighth, you might have them do an interview as part of the design process. So they're really trying to understand a user and pick a real world user that they can design for. So for third through fifth, that might just be a friend or a family member. But for sixth through eighth, you could have them research the needs of a um, of an essential worker, for example, and that could be done through an interview or it could be done just through uh, news articles or other sources that they can use to understand their needs. 
Um, similarly, you might vary the um, criteria and the constraints of the challenge. So for K through second, you may just have them do two to three um, distinct features based on looking at the um, actual animal or toy they're designing for, but then older grades might have more criteria and features that they're designing for. And you may vary the time and things like that and budget um, and materials. For K through second, we'd recommend sticking to an actual just a sketch um, as the prototype. But for third through fifth and sixth through eighth, you might end up deciding you're gonna make an actual mask and have students create a prototype after they've done the sketch. Um, so now that we've introduced the challenge, we're all gonna have a chance to do this. Um, so we figured some of you may not have toys at home <laughs> to design for. So we made up some sample users for you. We did our user research for you. Um, uh, so you can use those or you can find your own user. So I'm gonna choose this bear that my son has to design for. Um, Allison, who are you designing for today? Uh, I am designing for the beagle that I am dog sitting right now. Okay, so we have a beagle and a bear in our um, design chat um, team. You also could choose one of these sample users if you'd like. We've got Everest the pup from Paw Patrol. She likes snow and ice and she likes to run and jump a lot. We also have Erica, a first grader, who's a little sister of somebody and she has some things that she's told us um, she doesn't like getting um, the mask behind her ears and she doesn't like when her glasses get fogged up. And she likes elephants, rainbows, and monster trucks. So that could be considered when you're designing the mask for her. And then um, for six through eight, if you wanna choose that age range, um, you could um, design for farm workers in general and try to design some masks that might fit um, their needs. So they're active, they have heat and hair qual air quality issues, and they need to um, be able to hydrate and, um, uh, have a variety of sizes and we've included a, a resource that you might, for example, use. So you can put into chat who you're designing for, if you would like, tell us who your user is um, in chat. And we're gonna give you about seven minutes to do this part of the challenge. I'm gonna set my timer and we're gonna all try to have paper and pencil. The other thing we've done in case you're interested is We've created a Google slide deck where you can then share your creation. Um, you could also prototype there if you'd like. So if you like to use um, design process online, you could use shapes and other things to create your mask within the deck. So we'll put the link to this deck in the chat there. Um, and you can take a look at that and add um, your design there and prototype there if you would like, or just upload it there if you're, when you're done, if you care to. So I'm gonna set my timer for seven minutes and we're all gonna begin prototyping. Um, so feel free to share in chat what your user is and I'll go back again to that screen of the sample users. So I'm gonna observe my bear right now to see what his needs are. And I am looking at, and her name is Chaga, uh, looking at her ears, and she's, she doesn't have pointy ears, she has floppy ears, so the possibility of them slipping off is pretty great. Here, we put the um, link to the slides again in the chat. Um, so let's see, my bear has a big snout, so I'm feeling like some sort of cone-like design might work for him. Um, remember, if you want to send a message to everyone, you can chat to panelists and attendees. Somebody says they don't see anything. Yes, we're doing this webinar style, so you won't see anybody else prototyping at the moment. Um, uh, we will promote some people to panelists later and have them share, or, so verbally. Um, so you can um, think about being ready to do that if you'd like once you're finished prototyping. Um, okay. And then, Amy, why don't we talk about some of the uh, interview questions that we can have with 
Yeah, so um, one of the things that you can do with this activity um, is for the older students, you can have them conduct an interview. Um, you could try this with K through two as well by just imagining that they're interviewing their stuffed animals. So for example, I might ask Bear, so Bear, can you describe for me your day? And then I might have to imagine what Bear would say. So he says, well, I like to roll around a lot because I'm very rolly. So he'd say, I do that a lot. And then I'd say, hmm, okay, Bear, what do you like in a mask? Have you worn one before? And then he'd say no. So you could have K through two imagine, but older kids, it would probably be a better fit to have them do an actual interview. And these are some sample interview questions um, that we've put together that are included in this activity guide as well. Um, and we have also um, have an example of a user interview um, that you can refer to. Uh, which is also sponsored by uh, Stanford and Children's Health and with uh, a research doctor with uh, at Stanford Health, Dr. Mulgrew. So uh, <clears throat> it's a great uh, it's a great resource for you guys. And also we have uh, which we'll share out uh, after this uh, some prototyping tips and then also data collection tips uh, depending on what grade level it is that you guys are using or teaching. Okay, so so far I've got my, I think a side view is better to show my bear. So I've got a side view and then I've got my cone and he, he said he didn't like stuff around his ears. So I'm gonna try that. Yeah, same, my, my side view is way better than my, my other view. This, is, this looks terrible. Um, but because she has a collar on, instead of it going around the ears, I have it connecting to the collar. Nice, I think I need maybe a bottom. He's very wide. <laughs> like, his body is almost the same size as his head, I feel like. He doesn't really, he doesn't really have a neck much. So, if he has like a strap here and then here maybe. Actually, yeah, I think his other strap needs to go above his ears. There's a lot of straps right now. <laughs> lots of straps. Yeah, see, I have too many straps. I think I need to adjust it. How are we doing on time? I, I, we have about three minutes left. Can anybody else want to put in chat what you're prototyping for? What kind of user do you have to prototype for? We have a bear and a dog. Any other bee animals or users or any Babies. other thing? Babies? A stuffed rhino? I like that. Rhinos. Oh, that would be interesting. A horse. Oh, nice. Er oh, you did one for Erica? Nice, Erica, yeah. And I will go back to that just in case anybody needs to see it again as your users. Hmm. the interview questions again in case that's useful. So while you're prototyping with students, you may also, um, you know, share with them some questions that they can refer to if they have challenges or have them share with you what their progress is. So if you're doing it live like we are, you could have them turn their cameras on if they're able to or have a check-in where you're asking them to share what they've done uh, part way through or ask them to share who their user is. You could share a picture of their user if it's an actual animal or character. Okay, we've got about one minute left, folks. Okay, I'm, I'm sort of trying to decide what else my bear's needs are. Maybe I need to ask them some questions. Um, let's see. So bear. Um, is there anything else that you do in your day-to-day -day life that you think we should consider when having a mask? Hmm. He says he does a lot of sleeping. He does a lot of sleeping and then he goes out sometimes. So he doesn't need to wear a mask very often because he doesn't leave the house all that much. Although my son has taken to taking his stuffed animals on walks with him. So he might need to be something that he could get dirty if necessary. So maybe I need like a fabric that's easy to wash and durable, that might help. 
How's your beagle coming along, Erica? All right, Allison. <laughs> I can be Erica too. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's, it's feeling okay, except that I am kind of concerned that my dog's just going to breathe in like the fabric. And so I'm trying to figure out a way that I can structure it. So it kind of sticks out a little bit from their muzzle. So like they can have some space in between like their nose and their mouth from the actual fabric. Oh, that's a good thought. Yeah. Some, like, like some like wiring some or something room. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good thought. Um, so our time is up. So for those of you who um, are able to, you can add your stuff into um, this um, slide deck and I will pull it up now. Um, and see if we've got anything in there yet. So there's our sample. Oh, we have some masks. Excellent. So people have got um, some stuff in there already. Um, so please feel free to add to that um, if you would like or able to. Can you see that? I'm not sharing it yet, right? Okay. Um, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to promote some of you to panelists so you can share virtually. Allison will explain that process. Yeah, so um, what we'll ask you guys to do is just uh, raise your virtual hands uh, and we will choose a few people. Um, just if you, uh, uh, if you can do video, that would be great. Uh, we'd like to be able to see them. Uh, so we... And to raise your hand, you can go to... Um, the um to your participant information right yep and then you can just raise your hand and i will promote you please don't be shy like sharing is a big big part of the innovation design process and how it is that students are able to build confidence and like build off of one another uh and use those collaboration skills so please don't be shy yeah please feel free to share um and um, we will also share with you now some examples we got from while we're having some people be brave and bold and volunteer themselves. Um, these are some other um, examples of ma masks that we've seen from this activity. This is from a group that we work with in Bangalore, India. Um, some of these and the students actually did the physical prototyping for these as well. So um, that's something that you can also consider doing. So we need Anyone? some cheers to Come share. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, anyone. Oh, yay, we have a volunteer. Yeah. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. Anybody Courtney. else? One more person. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing um, the screen and let's turn on gallery view. Thank you, um, Anna. If you can raise your hand, we'll promote you as well. Okay. And- um, Are you able to turn on your video? It says the host needs to turn my video on. It says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Oh. Okay, I will fix that. Okay. And Jayasara, Jayasara, um, if you can raise your hand, we'll promote you as well. It looks like Anna and Jayasura also wanted to share. Um, Elsa. Sorry, I'm having an issue with why it is that I can't allow her to have the video. I'm sorry, you guys. Huh. Yeah, it's very strange. Hold on. Sorry, everyone. Maybe try to add a couple more and see what happens. If you make me co-host, oh, Allison, I can try. I, you know what? I figured it out. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I feel like every single time that we update, like uh, our our um our Zoom setting, something changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you 
should be able to share your screen now, Courtney. Oh, there I am. There you are. Okay. All right. Great, thanks for hanging in also, there with us. No problem. <laughs> Allison, it looks like Anna and Jaya Sarah were able, interested in sharing too. All right. Um, so we'll start with Courtney while we're getting the rest of them on. Courtney, you want to share with us who your user is and what you made for them? My user is this rhino. And so some features are he has the horn. Um, he's claustrophobic and doesn't want to breathe the mask in every time he breathes. Um, he doesn't like it around his ears and he rolls in mud a lot. So I made this little prototype. So there's a hole for his um, horn here. And then there's stiff material around here. So it doesn't, he doesn't breathe it in. Um, so it's like securely around his face, like kind of like that. And then it goes up through his ears and then connects in the back. So it'll be like this and then like around like that. And so that's kind of, I guess, what it would look like. And it's made of durable material that's easy to wash because he likes to go in mud. Thank you. Okay, let's give a virtual applause to Courtney. You can clap for her. Um, thank you, Courtney. So um, how would you test out your design? How do you think you could get feedback from your rhino if you needed to? Any ideas on how? <laughs> um, by trying to create it and then try to see how it fits on his face. That's the only way I could. I'm a hands-on learner so I can't I by doing it I think that will help me know what he likes and what he needs. Yeah and you could even make a paper prototype if you wanted to as opposed to like fabric or something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, all right so we'll try um, promoting Anna or Jayasura next to share. I think, did it work last time when you made them co-host, Allison? You were muted Sorry, again. I was on the, I was on the wrong, um, I was on the wrong uh, tab. Okay, Anna, you're up next. That should be good. Hi. <laughs> so you can unmute yourself Hi. and tell us about your mask. <laughs> so I actually put it into the slide deck. Do I just share my screen? Oh, excellent. Um, I think you can share your screen, yeah. Okay, so I made it for Erica, a first grader. It's not the most um, scientific thing, <laughs> but, and I had trouble with um, drawing tools because I'm just not used to using those drawing tools. But she likes, rain, um, she likes rainbows, it says, and elephants, and she doesn't like things behind her ears. So I did some research online because I want to know what's been done before. And I just did a Google for no loops behind the ears, and I found this, and I thought, oh, that would be great. Let's make this headband a rainbow colored headband. And it's, you know, the loops go to the button instead of the ears. So nothing behind the ears. She likes elephants and rainbows. And so I had the elephant, there's gonna be an elephant gun or something up there. I haven't done the science on that. But it will be able to squirt out water, a mist, in case she wants to try to get a rainbow somehow. And then um, the nose, the nose can also go and like clean off her eyeglasses because she doesn't like the eyeglasses getting fogged up. So somehow it'll help clean it up. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much as far as I got. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> I love that you brought like the whimsical part into like what it is that they, that they liked in their interests. That was, that's very, very cute. I like, I like that a lot. So great. I'll user the safest thing, but <laughs> Something that no, it's a great help. imagination. Like, I think she would probably enjoy imagining it, even if it didn't seem practical when it was actually implemented. How would you get feedback from her if you um, were? Well, I would ask her to look at the design. And if she wanted to try to make a prototype with me, then we could try to do that and just interview her and, and let her try it out. Yeah, thank you. Okay, virtual applause for Anna. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being brave. <laughs> okay, so we'll try Jayasura next. Okay, India, yeah, I'm Okay, got it? Awesome. No, I can't see. Jayasura, you can't run, Madam. Okay. 
Oh, we can hear you. Um, let's see if we can get your video on. Are not able to turn on the video? It looks like you are logged in in a couple of different places. So hold on just one second. Oh, I think I like you logged in in that. You should be able to turn on your video now. Are you able to turn on your video? Uh, oh, there we go. There we are. Awesome. Right. Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Here is Surya. He's a special need high school student, so we we were helping him to do it. Oh, and awesome. My daughter, she also did along with us. Yeah, good. Hi, my name is Nyla, and I just made like this kind of mask for just a person to wear. So you can wear it like that. Materials and things. And I just used paper towels and like some rubber bands. And this is Surya, so my mom wants to. You understood that you stapled it too. Yeah, and I just stapled it right over there so it's all connected. Nice. nice. How much you how much you, how much you make that for him? Yeah. Can you, can you put it on you? Can I try? See the camera? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. I think it's a bit stuck. There. Okay. How does it feel? Hey, yeah, look at that. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah? <laughs> you like that, Surya? Okay. Nice. That's like real time feedback. Thank you guys. That was great. Yeah, thank you guys so much. That's wonderful. And I did it for uh, uh, for Surya. I was helping you. So we did it for the horse. This is my design. I don't know you guys can see it. Uh huh. Yeah. So I was also thinking of paper towel because the mouth is like a kind of a cone thing. So I was having hard time. So I used the paper towel. So I was thinking we will use some kind of a wire so it, we can put it off. Uh, it can fit in properly here. And I was thinking to put the string, but it was closing the eyes. So I felt like maybe whatever the wire that we put it, we need to put the string to that one. So I put behind the neck, so it doesn't cover the eyes. Excellent. I've always thought about like the nose, the nose thing too, uh, like using a bobby pin. Oh yeah. Put it in there. Like, cause that's oh, yeah. something that's super like malleable, right? <laughs> yeah. You can bend it a lot. Yes, yeah. That's, that's awesome. I like your use of that's paper great. towels to prototype. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice one. Thank, Thank you guys so much. Okay. So we um, got some great um, feedback there. And we can look um, later at the, um, feel free to please still add your ideas to the um, prototype board if you'd like. Um, you can also um, keep adding or use that as a resource. Um, so um, the next question we have for you all is like, how would you adjust this activity for your grade level? So we heard people at the beginning say that they were working with a wide range of grades. So some people were working with um, sixth grade, um, some were working with fourth and fifth, some um, first grade. So please um, think about your grade level and how you would do this challenge with your students. Maybe you might adjust it for your setting as well. So how would you do this differently in your situation? Um, and you can feel free to put those ideas um, on Poll Everywhere, or if that's not working for you, you can also add them via chat. Um, so any ideas folks have on how you would adjust this activity for your grade? Um, and the link again for the um, Poll Everywhere um, I'll put it back in the chat again in case you didn't get it earlier. So We'll move on now, but if you think of any other ideas, throw them in the chat. 
Um, we have compiled a couple for you um, just in case it's useful. So one of the things we wanted to mention, a resource that you can use when you're thinking about designing, um, uh, using design challenges in any situation or setting, uh, this is a chart that we've created uh, that looks at the next generation science standards and the engineering progression and how it works across grade levels. Um, and there's a link for it um, because this is, of course, impossible to read. <laughs> Very tiny, but we will, be, we will be sharing that link with you. Uh, we will share after. the link with you later. <laughs> um, but some sense of it is, for example, sixth through eighth grade would be looking at creating multiple solutions and then comparing them and seeing which one is the optimal um, solution, whereas a K and one or K through second would just be looking at one or two solutions. And it looks like we had somebody say that they would um, think about adapting this in second grade by using uh, some analysis of material properties and structure and function, looking at how matter changes. Thank you, Anna. So some other things we've looked at in terms of how you would adapt challenges by grade level. Um, the next couple of slides are going to break down the different sections of the design process and how um, you would adapt by grade as well as by virtual setting. So for K through second, you might just read a picture book or a story to frame the challenge and introduce it to students. Um, whereas um, third through fifth, you might share with them a video like we did earlier or photos. Those can work for any age. I mean, middle school students might want to watch that video as well, but you might also challenge them to do some research or define a little bit of the criteria and problems on their own. And then in um, a virtual setting, you may want to make sure you introduce the challenge um, via a synchronous session, uh, like a live session where you let kids know what your expectations are if you're working with younger ones. But older kids, it might be fine to send them a handout with instructions and then have some live prototyping time together. Um, for when you get to the centerpiece of the process, when you're imagining, creating, testing, and reflecting, um, once again, there's um, with the younger ones, they may need some more time to just explore with the materials or um, some time to really discover how they work. You may make sure you're limiting materials and setting out kits that are clearly defined for them. Um, whereas with older kids, you can provide uh, ownership of that um, with students and you may be focusing more on the collaboration process. So in a virtual setting, for example, you might be able to do breakout rooms or share documents to encourage collaboration. Um, so there's really a lot of opportunities to scaffold across the process. Um, it looks like Anna also mentioned a suggestion for third grade to have them look at forces in motion and gravity and how the mask is kept in place. So yeah, that's an interesting thing. Uh, we noticed a, a number of the animals we were designing for had differently placed ears and so um, like something might fall off a certain placement depending on how it was placed. And then the last piece of the process is usually to share solutions. So um, with little ones and if you're in person, you might just do a simple circle time and have them show and tell what they've made. Um, and then with older students, you might have more formal presentations to special guests. Um, the nice thing about a virtual setting is that it's sometimes easier to get guest speakers. So um, we really encourage you to consider virtual showcases or virtual sharing and invite people to come be your audience. So um, students could design their masks for somebody and then have them show up at that session and, and see it and get the feedback. Or they could design for frontline workers and then have somebody come who represents that group. Um, that, that works especially well for older students. Allison, you were going to add something? Oh, yeah. Anna is just um, also contributing that uh, drawings and sentence prompts are great to get them, like, kids excited about uh, without them having to rush through their tinkering and recording process. Uh, and also, like, encouraging them to record videos, obviously, for, like, the older age, age groups. Um, and then Courtney has said that using Flipgrid has been another format that students can share their designs. 
Yeah, and um, really think about for younger students, like um, they can send those to you and you can sort of curate them for students as well, for the whole class as well, so everybody can see them. Um, and you can also try to debrief in small groups at times um, or with the whole class if you're able to. And we have uh, created a number of tech tips that we um, use to sort of give more details on this entire process. So we have the links in the slide deck that you can get, look at later if you're interested in seeing more resources on how to do each section of this process. Which again, we'll share via email and then we'll also be on our website. So before we finish up, we wanted to tell you to remind yourself that you are learning and you should be flexible and vary your strategies. Make sure you test and reflect your own practice um, and just be patient with yourself um, because it's always a learning experience. Uh, so we have a number of resources that we've built out for virtual and in-person settings. Um, and here are just a few links of those. Uh, the, tech, the educator resources are more uh, long, in-depth, uh, actual like what you would do in a classroom type of resources, but we also have the tech at home that takes a lot of those things and uh, breaks them down into digestible at home, uh, hands-on activities. We also have like educator and parent guides around how to, uh, how to facilitate that virtually. Um, in addition to that, we also have all of that um, in Spanish at our thetech.org in CASA. And um, don't forget to sign up for our educator newsletter if you're not already receiving that because you'll get updates on our latest news. And um, we are constantly adding resources to these pages. So we are coming out with new lesson plans and um, guides and resources all the time. Um, we pulled together a list of a couple of things that are coming up that you might want to pay attention to as well. Yeah, so um, obviously these are very structured and like what is going to be uh, adaptable or like uh, reasonable for the age group that you guys are uh, teaching. Uh, one of our newest ones is Get in the Game, which is a really great computational thinking program that uh, is unplugged. So you don't need a digital component to it, but it asks students to think through the process of designing their own board game. Um, in addition to that, we are also like branching out into a lot more of like our bio development and our bio design stuff that you guys have seen on the interactive floor, if you guys have been to the interactive. Um, and so we're gonna have some uh, great webinars around that and how to facilitate that with your, with your students uh, at a distance. And then also how it is that uh, you can use uh, narratives to build empathy for students in, in, order, to get, in order to have them create uh, great designs and solutions for, for people. Yeah, and this activity we did today is part of a suite of um, empathy building resources that we are developing at the moment. So if you're interested in doing more like this, please feel free to sign up for our December 8th webinar. And even, okay. if, you can't, even if you can't make it, we will always have these posted online afterwards. So, yeah. Um, so um, we would love your feedback. So please let us know how we did on this session. Uh, you can put it in. Uh, we'll put the link to the survey in chat, but before we you go, we wanted to make sure we answer any questions anybody might have. So um, please feel free to put them in chat, um, or you can ask the Q&A um, button at the top of the um, screen. If you have any questions, um, let us know. Any ways that we can support you in your practice. And again, after this, um, uh, Tomorrow we will be sending out the slides and um, all of the resources that we have highlighted in there for you guys. You want to put the survey link in there, Allison? Any questions that we can answer for everybody. Thank you all for coming. If you don't have any questions, we'll wrap up, but it will stick on for a couple more minutes in case anybody has anything else they've thought of. Um, thank you all so much for attending. Um, we hope this was helpful to you and uh, please stay in touch. Um, and please give us feedback on the survey.
thank you so much for your participation, Jayasura and your um, team. <laughs> Courtney, thank you. Anna, thank you so much. Thanks to those who shared um, and thanks to those who listened. I know it's sometimes nice to just have it on in the background. <laughs> mm -hmm.